When the vast expanse of the Persian Empire is mentioned, awe and wonder follow. Spanning continents, this empire was not held together by just its mighty army, but by the complex web of law and order. Ever pondered how such a massive realm maintained its cohesion? It wasn't merely diplomacy or trade. It was the unspeakable punishments, some so severe they would send shivers down your spine. And while we might think of emperors and generals as the main enforcers, sometimes the most stringent rules came from places you'd least expect. The rigorous demand for justice in the Persian Empire is starkly exemplified by the haunting story of King Darius and Judge Sisamnisi. According to ancient records, Sisamnisi was found guilty of corruption, having accepted a bribe to deliver an unjust verdict. King Darius, believing in the sanctity of justice, decided that an example needed to be set. Flaying, a gruesome process where the skin is methodically removed from the body, was chosen as the punishment not just to cause pain, but to serve as a lasting emblem of the consequences of betraying justice. After the grim process was completed, Darius ordered Sisamnisi's skin to be fashioned into a chair. This flesh chair was placed in the hall where judgments were made, symbolizing the uncompromising nature of Persian justice and serving as a warning to all. This epitomized the lengths the Persians would go to to ensure that justice, no matter how brutal, was served. From the unsettling tale of the flesh chair, we now move on to another grim method of punishment, asphyxiation by ash. This terrifying punishment wasn't for the common wrongdoer, but reserved for the traitors and unfaithful. At the heart of this penalty was the hollow tower. Those sentenced would be placed inside, bound and immobile. Then, slowly, ash would be introduced, creeping up around the captive, making breathing an agonizing struggle until it was impossible. The symbolism of ash in ancient cultures was profound, often representing purification, rebirth, or decay. In this context, it was a cruel irony, a purifying element turned into an instrument of torture. The Bible mentions ashes as a sign of mourning and redemption, yet here in the Persian justice system, it symbolized a slow, inevitable end. Captured by the Persians, Roman Emperor Valerian faced not just imprisonment, but utter humiliation at the hands of his conquerors. The Persian Empire, keen to humiliate and degrade a once mighty ruler, chose a death both painful and symbolic for him. Molten gold was poured down Valerian's throat, an agonizing execution that highlighted the stark contrast between the wealth and power gold represented and the vulnerability of life. But the Persians didn't stop at mere execution. In a final act of domination, Valerian's body was preserved and showcased, serving as a trophy and a stark reminder of Persian supremacy. For any visitor or envoy, the preserved emperor stood as a warning of the reach and ruthlessness of Persian might. Another disturbing yet ingenious method of ensuring justice in the Persian Empire was tree splitting. In the late Persian era, thieves were met with a severe visual punishment, leaving a permanent mark not only on the culprits but on the minds of the spectators. The process was simple, yet devastating. A thief was bound between two bent trees, and upon their release, the force would literally tear the wrongdoer apart. It wasn't just the physical pain that served justice. The public display of such a consequence was a powerful, visual warning. As crowds gathered, the scene became a stark lesson, vividly conveying the fate awaiting those who dared to break the rules. It was more than just a punishment. It was a message reminding all of the high cost of theft. The Persian Empire's methods of punishment took yet another horrifying turn with the act of boiling alive. This brutal sentence wasn't merely about inflicting pain, it was deeply symbolic, showing that the empire would go to extreme lengths to cleanse its society of impurities. Those unfortunate enough to face this penalty were immersed in a large cauldron, 
the water gradually heated until it reached a boiling point. The physical agony endured by the sentenced was undeniable, but the psychological impact on the witnesses was equally profound. The Empire ensured that every time a cauldron was lit, the message was clear. Crimes would be met with by the most severe of consequences. The Persian Empire's innovative methods of execution didn't cease to astonish. In a shocking display of both power and dominance, they utilized the might of elephants to carry out capital punishments. This immense creature, often associated with majesty and strength, was transformed into a living instrument of death. The process was unsettling. Convicts were laid down on the ground, awaiting their grim fate under the gargantuan foot of an elephant. The sheer weight and force of these gentle giants was manipulated to crush the life out of the condemned. The symbolism was not lost on the masses. Just as the mighty elephant could easily squash a human beneath its foot, so too could the Persian Empire quash any rebellion with unparalleled might. For those forced to bear witness, the terror was real. The slow, deliberate movement of the elephant, the heart-wrenching cries of the victim, and the final, deafening silence post-execution served as a powerful reminder that the Empire's strength was unyielding. The Brazen Bull was another unspeakable punishment of the Persian Empire. This horrific device was a hollow statue, masterfully crafted out of bronze in the unmistakable shape of a bull. Its design, though visually appealing, concealed a dark purpose. Inside its hollow cavity, victims were imprisoned, their final moments unfolding in unspeakable torture. The bull was then heated from below, turning the statue into a makeshift oven. As the metal grew hot, the person inside was subjected to severe pain, their screams eerily transformed into bull-like roars due to the device's clever acoustics. This chilling symphony of pain was not just torment for the person inside, but also a psychological nightmare for those who witnessed it. The Persians possessed yet another horrifying method that stands out in history, impalement. This gruesome technique wasn't merely about execution, it was a loud statement, a clear warning to those who dared to defy the mighty Persian Empire. The very purpose of impalement was not just the death of the victim, but the lasting horror it induced in those who beheld the grim spectacle. To imagine the harrowing process, one must think of a sharpened stake gradually forced through the victim's body, avoiding vital organs to prolong the agony. Over hours, and sometimes even days, gravity would take its toll, slowly and painfully ending the victim's life. This wasn't a quick death and it was precisely this public display that maximized its impact. For locals and visitors alike, seeing rows of impaled individuals served as a strong reminder of Persian power and the dire consequences of disobedience. Beyond the immediate physical torment, the lasting psychological scars it left on the populace were profound, ensuring compliance and respect for the empire's rules and decrees. In the shadow of the haunting spectacle of impalement, another equally chilling method of execution emerges, the wheel. While wheels are often associated with progress and movement, in the dark corners of history, they symbolize the torturous end. The very mention of the wheel as an instrument of death would send shivers down the spines of those who lived under its threat. The process was brutal. Victims would be laid spread eagle on a large wheel, their limbs stretched out along its spokes, with a heavy iron bar or hammer, the executioner would then methodically break the bones of the accused, starting with the fingers and toes and moving inwards. The shattered bones, no longer providing structure, meant the victim's body would sag between the spokes, leading to a slow and agonizing death. The horror didn't end with the last breath, as the wheel would often be raised atop a pole, serving both as a warning and a grim spectacle for the rest of the people. As we conclude our journey through history, the chilling methods employed by the Persian Empire remind us of the lengths humanity can go to to exert power and instill fear. These tales of torture are not just stories from a bygone era, but distinct reminders of the depths and heights of human nature. As we step back and reflect on this bygone era, 
one can't help but ponder, what are the lines we draw today? And how will future generations judge our own methods of justice and control? This is History Uncharted. See you next time.